The son of perdition, the Antichrist, who will reign very few of times, will come at the end day of the duration of the world. This quote from Hildegard of Bingen notes the coming of the Antichrist. She stated that before this happens, her prophecies on the end of time will occur. These visions include five successive periods before the appearance of the Antichrist, each of which will occur after she passes. Please watch the previous episode, Prophecies, End of Time Apocalypse, Hildegard of Bingen, to learn about these events as well as a biography of her fascinating life. Even though Hildegard of Bingen was a nun, science and religion did not exist in separate worlds to her mind. In addition, Hildegard of Bingen was not prudish in her manner. She was a campaigner against political and church corruption at a time when both exercised a degree of absolute power. In fact, Hildegard of Bingen and her following of nuns were targeted for a group excommunication because they would not disinter an alleged apostate buried on their church grounds. This interdict was rescinded just months before her death in 1179. If that had not have occurred, Hildegard of Bingen would not have been formally canonized in 2012 by Pope Benedict XVI or given the honor Doctor of the Church. In history, only four women have received this high honor. For these and other high achievements, Medieval to Modern wishes to share her medieval prophecies. Hello everyone, my name is Cray, host of Medieval to Modern. We feature fascinating information from civilization's medieval ages. Thank you for joining us today and please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to help grow this channel. Before we reveal the prophecies from Hildegard of Bingen for the coming of the Antichrist, there are a few important points to mention. She specifically states that the Antichrist will try to mimic Christ through the performance of miracles, attempting to deceive people into believing it is the Messiah. What is also very interesting is that centuries before before the Protestant Reformation, she stated that the victims of the Great Error will throng back to the fold of Catholicism in large numbers. As in various important prophecies on the Antichrist, Hildegard of Bingen notes it will ascend a mountain and there be killed. It is at that moment people will see the errors of their previous beliefs. Now, in Hildegard of Bingen's own words, are her prophecies for the Antichrist. The son of perdition, the Antichrist, who will reign very few of times, will come at the end day of the duration of the world, and at times corresponding to the moment just before the sun disappears from the horizon. After having passed a licentious youth among very perverted men, and in a desert, she being conducted by a demon disguised as an angel of light, the mother of the son of perdition will conceive and give birth without knowing the father. In another land, she will make men believe that her birth was some miraculous thing, seeing that she had not appointed a spouse, and she will ignore that. She will say how the infant she had brought into the world had been formed in her womb, and the people will regard it as a saint and qualified to the title. The son of perdition is this very wicked beast who will put to death those who refuse to believe in him, who will associate with kings, priests, the great and the rich, who will mistake the humility and will esteem pride, who will finally subjugate the entire universe by his diabolical means. He will gain over many people and tell them, you are allowed to do all that you please, renounce the fast, it suffices that you love me, I who am your God. He will show them treasures and riches, and he will permit them to riot in all sorts of festivities as they please. He will tell them, those who believe in me will receive pardon on their sins and will live with me eternally. He will reject baptism and evangelism, and he will reject in derision all the precepts the Spirit has given to men of my part. Then he will say to his partisans, Strike me with a sword, and place my corpse in a proper shroud until the day of my resurrection. They will believe him to have really given over to death, and from his mortal wound he will make a striking semblance of resuscitation, after which he will compose himself a certain cipher, which he will say to be a pledge of salute. He will give it to all his servants like the sign of our faith in heaven, and he will command them to adore it. Concerning those who, for the love of my Jesus' name, will refuse to render this sacrilegious adoration to the son of perdition, he will put them to death amidst the cruelest torments. But our Lord will defend his two witnesses, Enoch and Elias, whom our Lord has reserved for these times. Their mission will be to combat the man of evil and reprimand him in the sight of the faithful whom he has seduced. They will have the virtue of operating the most brilliant miracle in all the places where the son of perdition has spread his evil doctrines. In the meantime, the Lord will permit this evildoer to put them to death, but the Lord will give them in heaven the recompense of their travails. Later, however, after the coming of Enoch and Elias, the Antichrist will be destroyed, and the church will sing forth with unprecedented glory, and the victims of the great error will throng to return to the fold. 
The man of sin will be born of an ungodly woman who, from her infancy, will have been initiated into occult sciences in the wiles of the demon. She will live in the desert with perverse men and abandon herself to crime with so much the greater ardor as she will think she is authorized thereby to by revelations of an angel. And thus, in the fire of burning concupiscence, she will conceive the son of perdition without knowing by what father. Then she will teach that fornication is permitted, declaring herself holy and honored as a saint. But Lucifer, the old and cunning serpent, will find the fruit of her womb with his infernal spirit and entirely possess the fruit of sin. Now, when he shall have attained the age of manhood, he will set himself up as a new master and teach perverse doctrine. Soon he will revolt against the saints, and he will acquire such great power that in the madness of his pride he would raise himself above the clouds. And as in the beginning Satan said, I will be like unto the Most High, and fell so in those days. And he will fall when he will say in the person of his Son, I am the Savior of the world. He will ally himself with the kings, the princesses, and the powerful ones of the earth. He will condemn humility and will extol all the doctrines of pride. His magic art will feign the most astonishing prodigies. He will disturb the atmosphere, command thunder and tempest, produce hail and horrible lightning. He will move mountains, dry up streams, reanimate the withered verdure of forests. His arts will be practiced upon the elements, but chiefly upon man will he exhaust his infernal power. He will seem to take away health and restore it. How so? By sending some possessed soul into a dead body to move it for a time. But these resurrections will be of short duration. At the sight of these things, many will be terrified and will believe in him. And some, preserving their primitive faith, will nevertheless court the favor of the man of sin or fear his displeasure. And so many will be led astray among those who, shutting the interior eye of their soul, will live habitually in exterior things. After the Antichrist has ascended a high mountain and been destroyed by Christ, many erring souls will return to truth, and man will make rapid progress in the ways of holiness. Nothing good will enter into him, nor will be able to be in him. For he will be nourished in diverse and secret places, lest he should be known by men. And he will be imbued with all diabolical arts. And he will be hidden until he is of full age. Nor will he show above the perversities which will be in him, until he knows himself to be full and superabundant in all iniquities. He will appear to agitate the air, to make fire descend from heaven, to produce rainbows, lightning, thunder, and hail, to tumble mountains, dry up streams, to strip the verdure of trees, a forest, and to restore them again. He will also appear to be able to make men sick or well at will, to chase out demons, and at times even to resuscitate the dead, making a cadaver move like it was alive. But this kind of resurrection will never endure beyond a little time, for the glory of God will not suffer it. Ostensibly, he will be murdered, spill his blood and die. With bewilderment and consternation, mankind will learn that he is not dead, but has awakened from his death sleep. From the beginning of his course, many battles and many things contrary to lawful dispensation will arise, and charity will be extinguished in men. In them also will arise bitterness and harshness, and there will be so many heresies that heretics will preach their errors openly and certainly, and there shall be so much doubt and incertitude in the Catholic faith of Christians that men shall be in doubt of what God they invoke, and many signs shall appear in the sun and moon, and in the stars and in the waters, and in other elements and creatures, so that, as it were a picture, future events shall be foretold by their portents. Then so much sadness shall occupy men at that time, that they shall be led to die, as if for nothing. But those who are perfect in the Catholic faith will await in great contrition what God wills to ordain. And these great tribulations shall proceed in this way, while the son of perdition shall open his mouth in the words of falsehood and his deceptions. Heaven and earth shall tremble together, but after the fall of the Antichrist, the glory of the Son of God shall be increased. As soon as he is born, he will have teeth and pronounce blasphemies. In short, he will be a born devil. He will emit fearful cries, work miracles, and wallow in luxury and vice. He will have brothers who are also demons incarnate. And at the age of twelve, they will distinguish themselves in brilliant achievements. They will command an armed force, which will be supported by the infernal legions. After the son of perdition has accomplished all of his evil designs, he will call together all of his believers and tell them that he wishes to ascend into heaven. At the moment of his ascension, a thunderbolt will strike him to the ground and he will die. 
the mountain where he was established for the operation of his ascension in an instant will be covered with a thick cloud which emits an unbearable odor of truly infernal corruption at the sight of his body the eyes of great number of persons will open and they will be made to see their miserable error after the sorrowful defeat of the son of perdition the spouse of my son who is the church will shine with a glory without equal and the victims of the error will be impressed to re-enter the sheepfold as to the day after the fall of antichrist when the world will end man must not seek to know for he can never learn it that secret the father has reserved for himself thank you for supporting us at medieval to modern please be sure to watch our next episode or one shown at the end of this video also be sure to like subscribe comment and spread the word about this channel so we can create more exciting content i wish you good tidings as we remember that sharing knowledge has been a noble deed throughout the ages